matandaan nyo pa noong unang episodes ng Oh My Job kung saan namigay kami ng mga libreng bisikleta? Alam nyo bang inspired yun sa totoong programa ng Dole nitong pandemya? Narito ang sangay ng Dole na may pasimuno sa Free Bis o ang Free Bisikleta Program. Kilalanin sila sa Hello Dole! Ang mga manggagawa natin na nagigipit kapag may tumatamang sakuna sa bansa ay tinutulungan ng BWSC o Bureau of Workers with Special Concerns. Primarily, ang ginagawa ng BWSC is to uh, develop programs, policies, uh, plans, strategies para sa mga marginalized and vulnerable workers natin towards, of course, their decent and productive employment. And who are they? We have self-employed and paid family workers. We also have yung mga small transport workers, marginalized fisher folks, farmers, um, yung mga working women and youth, uh, pati yung indigenous peoples, pwede yung mga victims of armed conflict. Nito ang pandemya, ang unang-unang programang hatid ng BWSC ay ang TUPAD. Yung pinakamalaki natin na programa is na tulong panghanap buhay sa ating disadvantage or displaced workers. Uh, ito, nagbibigay tayo ng emergency employment. Ang trabaho, usually from 10 days hanggang 30 days. And then, babayaran sila ng sahod equivalent to the regional wage rates prevailing doon sa region kung nasaan sila. Bukod sa emergency aid, pwede rin palang tumulong ang tupad kapag nagkaroon sila ng sariling kabuhayan. Meron tayong kabuhayan um, formation, yung gustong mag-start up, meron din tayong kabuhayan enhancement, yung may existing na pero gusto nyo na-expand pa yung business niya. And meron din tayong um, kabuhayan restoration in the event na uh, nawala ang kanyang kabuhayan o nasira, pwedeng tulungan ng Department of Labor and Employment. So meron tayong sinusunod na per capita. Kung halimbawa, individual project ito, kunyari gusto niyang um, magsari-sari store, magnego cart, binibigyan ng dole ang ating beneficiary ng raw materials at ito ay uh, hindi lalagpas sa 30,000 pesos. At nang marami ang nawala ng trabaho dahil sa pandemya, Eto ang naging bright idea ng BWSC. Last year, ni-launch din natin ang special project ng livelihood uh, program, yung Free Bisikleta or Free Bis Project na migay ang Department of Labor and Employment ng uh, bisikleta. Na meron siyang mga accessories tulad ng insulation bag, cellphone, pati load. Oo. And uh, ito ay binibigay natin doon sa gustong mag-venture into selling their food products or makipag-tie up sa mga food delivery service. At ang BWSC rin ang tagapangalaga ng kapakanan ng ating mga kasambahay. BWSC din po ang lead bureau sa pagmumonitor din ng um, batas kasambahay lo. Nagkakaroon din tayo ng mga learning sessions para uh, maging aware din sila sa mga programs ng DOL, particularly sa livelihood. And then, um, mas aware pa sila doon sa uh, provisions ng batas kasambay. Ano yung mga karapatan nila? Kaya wag iisipin na lagi ka nalang dehado sa buhay. Ang dole ay may BWSC na handang umalalay. Ang aming din pong bureau ay bukas din. Meron po tayong um, telephone number na pwede niyo pong tawagan. It's 8404-3336. Pwede din po kaming magtanggap ng inyong mga inaing tungkol sa trabaho.
Magandang araw sa ating lahat. Pag-uusapan natin ngayon ang contact tracing. Ang contact tracing ay isang importanteng hakbang sa ilalim ng ating PDITR approach laban sa COVID-19. Dito, tinutukoy natin ang mga posible na expose sa isang nagpositibo sa sakit na ito. Kasabay dito ay umiikot ang ating mga contact tracing teams upang tukuyin ang mga posibleng close contacts para may refer sa tamang testing at para may refer sa quarantine o isolation. Ito ay para pigilan natin ang patuloy na pagkalat ng COVID-19. Kaya importante na maging tapat sa ating mga contact tracing teams. Huwag mag-alala dahil ang mga impormasyon na ibibigay nyo sa ating contact tracing teams ay manatiling confidential at hindi kakalat sa publiko. Maliban sa mga impormasyon ng pagkakakalanlan o identification data, ay dapat maging tapat sa ating mga contact tracing teams sa mga sumusunod na katanungan. Letter A, travel history o kung saan ka nanalagi o pumunta sa nakaraang 14 days. Letter B, exposure o interaction sa isang positibong kaso. Letter C, kasalukuyang kalagayan o ang iyong health status. At letter D, kung nagkaroon ng mga sintomas sa ito at kailan ito unang lumitaw. Letter E, tagal at lugar ng interaksyon sa ibang tao. Letter F, contact details sa mga tao na nagkaroon ng interaksyon sa iyo. Kung ikaw ay isang suspect probable confirmed case, importante ipagbigay alam ang iyong kalagayan sa inyong dealer upang masimulan na ang contact tracing. Maging tapat at ipaalam din sa mga ibang tao na kasalamuha ang iyong kalagayan at hikayatin din sila na maging tapat at makipagtulungan sa kanilang contact tracing teams. Tandaan, kung lahat ng suspect, probable, confirmed na kaso at ang kanilang mga close contact ay mabibigyan ng tamang payo at dadaan sa isolation o quarantine, mapipigilan natin ang pagkalat ng COVID-19. Kaya natin to. Let's be the solution plus sa COVID-19. Be the solution plus laban sa COVID-19. public health standards. Meron din itong QR code para mapadali ang contact tracing. Ito ay libre lang. Pero, kailangan i-renew every 6 months or every year kung nasa tourism sector ang iyong business. Kung meron ka ng mga documents na ito, pwede ka na mag-apply para sa Safety Seal Certification. May iba-ibang office para sa iba't ibang klase ng mga negosyo. Pag na-determine nyo na ang issuing authority, simple lang ang steps para makuha ang safety seal. Pumunta sa office ng issuing authority o sa kanilang website. Kumuha ng safety seal checklist at magsagawa ng self-assessment para sa iyong business. I-submit ang checklist at abangan ang inspection schedule. Pag na-approve ang application, bibigyan kayo ng safety seal sticker. Pag hindi naman na-approve, sasabihin ko anong health standard ang hindi nasunod at bibigyan kayo ng pagkakataong ayusin ito. Pag nakuha na ang safety seal, ipaskill ito sa may entrance para makita agad ng mga customer. Pwede nyo rin ipang malaki na certified safe kayo sa inyong mga social media pages. Paalala lamang, ang isang safety seal ay para sa isang branch lang. Siguraduhin bawat branch mo ay certified safe. Siguraduhin din na nasusunod palagi ang minimum public health standards dahil baka mabawi ang iyong certification. Maaring mag-operate kahit na walang safety seal. Pero hindi ba mas mahalagang kampante ang mga customer sa loob ng iyong negosyo? Kaya kumuha na ng safety seal para ingat-angat tayong lahat.
Magandang hapon, Luzon, Visayas at Mindanao. Magandang hapon po sa ating mga kababayan, mga kababayang manggagawa at mga kasama sa Department of Labor and Employment sa iba't ibang uh, bahagi ng Pilipinas. Magandang hapon din, magandang maga, magandang tanghali, magandang gabi sa ating mga kababayang manggagawa sa iba't ibang sulok ng mundo. Uh, kamusta po kayo? Hangat po namin mula dito sa Department of Labor and Employment sa pamumuno ng Secretary Bebat Bello na nasa, nasa mabuti kayong kalagayan, libre sa COVID. Ngayon uh, po ay araw ng biyernes. Kaya sa atin po mga kasamahan sa media, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Uh, birthday ngayon ni ating kaibigan, si Tristan Nodalo na CNN Philippines. Happy birthday, Tristan. Uh, are you with us? Magandang hapon sa ating mga kaibigan sa media. Uh, dahil welcome, welcome again to this Friday edition of our Kwentuhan dito sa V Cafe at Dole. Uh, uh, update po muna tayo. Ito yung hinihingi ni Ray Pelayo kanina pang umaga. Pinakahuling datos ng repatriation natin po. ang mga napauwi nating mga kababayang manggagawa mula sa iba't ibang bahagi ng mundo as of uh, as of this morning po early this morning ang figure po natin ang bilang ng manggagawang Pilipino na nakauwi na sa ating bayan at naihatid na sa kanilang mga lalawigan at kapiling na ng kanilang mga mahal sa buhay umabot na po ng 630,694 630,694 at patuloy pa pong 
dumarating ang ating mga kababayan sa iba't galing sa iba't ibang <clears throat> uh, bahagi ng mundo. Pero uh, sa mga susunod na araw po dahil mula mula Agosto 7, August 7, magkakaroon po ng bagong quarantine protocol. So inaasahan din po natin na magkakaroon ng adjustment sa quarantine protocols even for those arriving and repatriated OFWs. Kaya po, uh, ang tabayanan po natin ang magiging pagbabago pangayon sa <clears throat> bagong uh, atakaran na pinatutupad ng IATF upang uh, uh, sansalain ang patuloy na paglaganap ng bagong strain ng COVID dito sa ating bayan, ang Delta variant. At uh, speaking of Delta variant, uh, update pa rin po. Doon po sa <laughs> ang aking paboritong bansa, ang Israel. Starting next week po, mag-umpisa na na third, third, uh, or third shot or boost, booster shot ang mga senior citizens doon sa Israel. Dahil sa kabila po ng katotohanan na higit na 90% o 95% na po yata ng kanilang uh, population ay meron ng bakuna, uh, ang, ang kabuang bilang po kasi na meron ng bakuna sa kanila na first dose ay 5,775,845. Ibalit, ang meron ng second dose ng AstraZeneca, ay, kung hindi ako nagkakamali mga kababayan, ay umabot na ng 5,346,013. Pero sa bilang po na ito, yung mga senior citizens, yung 60 years old and above, starting next week, batay po sa ulat ng ating labor attache na si Don sa Israel, na si labor attache Rudy Gabasan, Starting next week po, magkakaroon na po ng third dose ang mga senior citizens. And the intention is to arrest the spread of the new variant na uh, tawag dito, Delta, variant ng COVID. Ang ehemplo po nito, karanasan ng Israel, may papatunay po na kahit po malaganap na ang bakuna, hindi po Uh, exempted sila sa pagkakaroon ng COVID. Ibig kong sabihin, patuloy pa rin po dapat na nag-iingat. Pero, ang pinakamagandang balita po niyan, yung pong may mga bakuna, eh sila po yung less vulnerable. Kahit na magkaroon ng sila ng COVID, hindi naman po agad-agad mamamatay. Meron silang protection sa mga serious cases at uh, serious infection ng COVID. Yun lang po ang ibig sabihin. So, Uh, sa atin po, dahil po konti pa lang ang may bakuna, kung meron na po available na bakuna sa inyong lugar, tulad ng lagi panawagan ng ating mga opisyal ng pamahalaan, sama na po sa Secretary Bellio, magpabakuna na po tayo. Tuloy-tuloy naman po ang pagdating ng bakuna dito sa atin. Okay. At dahil po, uh, today is Friday, Pamustahin naman natin ang kalagay ng ating mga kababayang manggagawa sa pamanggitan po ng ating Philippine Overseas Labor Office sa Tokyo. Uh, kasama po natin ngayong araw, ngayong hapon, ang napakaganda po, napakasipag na labor attache natin sa Tokyo. Walang iba po kundi si labor attache Mary Rose Escalada. Good afternoon sa iyo, uh, Labat Rose. Kamusta po kayo dyan sa Tokyo. Good afternoon po, Director Rolly. Salamat po sa invitation. Good afternoon sa lahat na nakikinig ngayon sa V-Cafe ng Dolly. Mabuti naman po kami ngayon, kaya lang uh, hindi maganda yung report dahil uh, tumataas na naman yung infection sa, not only in Tokyo area, but all over Japan. Oo nga, labat. Pero bago natin marinig ang hindi masyado <laughs> magandang balita. Ah... <laughs> uh, may mga kasama din tayong media dito sa ano kaya bati mo muna din sila uh, labat. Si 
Hello, uh, hello everyone. I saw someone from yeah. Uh, Ikuta Kikita, sir. Uh, hello everyone. Thank you very much, uh, mga kaibigan natin sa media. Thank you for attending ngayong hapon, and I hope we can have a fruitful conversation. But dahil uh, with the labor market ng Japan. Yeah. Maganda uh, talaga ang labor market ng Japan. Labat, uh, thank you for joining us. Ah, uh, uh, I'm sure. Madami kang maibabahagi dyan uh, mula sa karanasan ng ating mga kababayan dyan, yung ating paano natin, paano nila, uh, paano natin uh, napangibabawan ang mga challenges no, sa harap ng uh, COVID na patuloy na nananalasa <laughs> sa mga ekonomiya sa buong mundo. No? Uh, Kumustahin muna natin ang record natin sa uh, Tokyo Olympics. <laughs> Meron ka bang update? <laughs> meron kaming, uh, of course, si Ms. Diaz. Uh, we, may opportunity kami na nakipag-virtual sa kanya. And uh -huh. meron din tayong isa doon sa uh, boxer, boxing natin na, na candidate na candidate siya for, for gold, uh, silver medal. Sabi nga ng ambassador, we will pray that it will be uh, another gold, another wow. four gold for, wow. for, uh, for Tokyo Olympics. We continue to pray for our athletes there in uh, Tokyo. Sana nga masundan pa ang uh, naunang ginto at umani pa tayo ng napakaraming ginto para meron tayong ibebenta later. <laughs> <laughs> Yan, sige, uh, Labat Rose. Kumusta ba ang uh, kalagayang sinasabi mo? No? Pero bago yung, yung sitwasyon mo ngayon, ano ba yung uh, record natin so far ng COVID infection among our Alam mo, Labat, my, my daughter is there in Tokyo. Hi, <laughs> sir. Yeah. Uh, nakalimutan ko lang. Hanapin ko ngayon yung lugar kung saan prefecture siya nandiyan. Pero uh, hindi siya makauwi dahil, yeah. dahil hindi sila pinapayagan ng kanilang uh, company na makauwi. But she's been there since uh, last year, since last year. I really miss her so much. <laughs> anyway, pag nagka problema, sabihin ko puntahan ka. No? Kasi pwede okay. naman silang umuwi and they can come back in Japan. Kaya lang, meron nga maraming uh, quarantine period. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kumusta ba labat ang ating mga kababayan? How are, uh, how are they able to, uh, uh, to overcome the challenges simula last year pa? Ano bang record ng COVID dyan so far? Go ahead, so labat. Please. Or as of July 2021, Dahil nga, meron tayong act on protection for in personal information. Hindi natin basta-basta makuha yung number ng OFW unless lang if they will allow uh, the government to, uh, to, to share kung infected sila. So as of July 2021, meron tayong 494 infection. And isa po dyan ang uh, reported ng government na namatay. Oh, dami-dami din bilang yan, ano, labat. Okay, uh, yung recovery, uh, labat, uh, and yung vaccination ng ating mga kababayan, kamusta? So recovery, ano naman nila, uh, mostly uh, it took them more than the seven-day period. Pero lahat, uh, except yung isa, naka-recover naman yung 493 na workers natin. or Filipino in general. Hindi lang po yan worker, but Filipino in general. Meaning, uh, overseas Filipino migrant workers, including the permanent and uh, long-term residents. Now, for vaccination, again, uh, yung act of uh, protection for personal information, hindi po natin ma-specify if it is uh, OFW ba, Filipino ba, o anong nationality. But in general, meron po tayong 48,270,230 for first dose. Then the second one is 34,323,238 yung naka second dose na. So this is all over Japan. For but for Tokyo jurisdiction, meron tayong 9,318,791. So including na po dyan ang mga Filipinos. Kasi uh, Wala naman silang pinipili as long as you are a resident of 
specific prefecture or local government nakaka-receive na po kayo ng information for your, for your vaccination? Uh, at the onset of COVID last year, uh, katulad din ng sa ibang ang mga bansa labat nagkaroon din ng lockdown and of course with that uh, with that uh, restriction in movement of people uh, including those uh, restrictions in work ilan ang gaano katindi naging epekto niyan sa empleyo in terms of ano yung ang, ang ating mga OFWs yan fortunately sa Japan hindi masyado marami yung yung uh, pinatawag natin na displaced Uh, usually for load, especially yung mga nasa hotel industry at saka yung mga nasa restaurant kasi ito yung natamaan talaga ng state of emergency. But for others, yung ating mga professionals, uh, pinatawag natin na temporary displacement kasi ang government meron na that intervention and uh, yung mga small businesses binigyan agad ng support from the government. Kaya tuloy-tuloy, it's just a temporary displacement Others find new job, and those who are furloughed, dahil meron silang binigyan sila ng intervention ng government yung kanilang company, uh, short lang yung displacement nila. So, so far, maganda naman, uh, tuloy-tuloy naman ang work nila. Unless, of course, pag nag-end na ang contract. Mm-hmm. So, pag nag-end ang contract, automatic na nakaka-uwi ba sila or uh, they are prevented by the restrictions in... Uh, with the border control, meron bang such thing as border control in terms of you know outgoing and uh, uh, inbound uh, passengers from other countries? For inbound, meron pang border restriction in Japan. Unfortunately, mga 154 countries as of July 2021, and unfortunately included po ang Philippines nyan. But for outbound, wala naman yung restriction. So we are uh, ask the workers to follow the protocol. set by IITF in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Okay. Relatively nag-relax yung COVID situation except of course itong pagpasok ng panibagong variant. Uh, ganyan din ba yun? Na, na, nung nag-relax na, nagbumukas ulit yung ekonomiya uh, ng Japan. And how is it now and the prospect despite this uh, new variant? Nung Noong 2020, uh, bumaba talaga siya dahil meron mga reports of uh, bankruptcies. Kaya lang because of the intervention of the government, hindi agad uh, na-feel ng, ng labor, sexu- labor sector yung, yung effect. But uh, early 2021, dahil nga uh, continuous pa rin yung, yung increase ng infection, meron talagang iba na nagpo-close na. Nung nag-close ang ibang industries, uh, yung ibang workers natin, they opted to go back home temporarily and uh, they plan to go back if the border will open again. There was a time na alala ko uh, labat ang pinakamalakas na sector ng well, in so far as our Filipinos are concerned, yung em- Uh, entertainment or hospitality industry. But gone are those days, di ba? Ano nga yung sector ng ekonomiya ng Japan ang pinakamaraming concentration ng ating mga uh, kababayang Pilipino? Can, we, can I share the, the data? This is the okay. next one. Uh, can we share the data, please? So that we can see the pie graph. This is okay, this data is as of uh, December 2021. This is the latest data from the Ministry of Justice, which was released June 15 of this uh, June 15, 2021. So in Tokyo, Japan, in under our jurisdiction, we have a total of 24,550 OFWs. So this is the labor market information under the Polo Tokyo jurisdiction. So as you can see, 49.6% or 50% of the labor market in this under the under the Tokyo jurisdiction is on trainees under the technical intern training program. Mm-hmm. Then the second one is the 
category on professionals, this is the 30.3%, discovers yung ating mga engineers, professors, mga uh, those in education, information technology, ating mga land-based na maritime, at saka yung ating mga interpreters. Then, the third one is the workers under designated activities visa. Ito, uh, malaki, wide masyado ito siya na na category. So, dito yun na nabilong yung household service workers natin under the National Strategic Special Zones. Nandito yung ating mga mga shipbuilders under the Ministry of Ministry of Land and Infrastructure and Transportation Tourism. Yung shipbuilders under the Foreign Workers Acceptance Program at saka yung mga construction workers natin under the Foreign Construction Workers Program. Nandiyan din po yung ating mga household service worker ng uh, deployed para sa mga diplomats. Unfortunately, that number is, includes also those uh, families ng mga dependent kasi hindi siya agad na separate ng government. So definitely, those are the workers under that visa. Then the fourth one, ito yung pinaka maganda din, yung skilled workers natin. Maganda, very popular din ito, especially in Hokkaido area. Ito yung mga equine, sa equine industry. Ito yung mga cook natin, highly, highly skilled na cook. Then the, the fourth one, one, two, three, four, fifth one is the newest visa in Japan. This is, I'm going to uh, promote this one. This one is specified skilled workers. And we have 1.3% of that. Then yung sinabi po ninyo na overseas performing artists, ang tawag po natin sa kanila ay overseas performing artists o yung tinatawag ninyo na entertainers. Uh, I saw them perform. They are really the best. Mm -hmm. And the last one is the newest visa we have in Japan under healthcare workers. Ito yung medical services. Kailangan uh, nakapasa po kayo ng exam sa Japan uh, mm -hmm. para makakuha nito na visa at saka yung tinatawag nating nursing care visa para sa mga care workers naman. So yan po yung ating uh, labor market information sa Japan. Thank you for that information, uh, Labat Rose. No? Uh, very impressive yung pan, uh, pagtataka. No? I mean, hindi naman nakapagtataka, pero pinakamalaki para talaga yung uh, home, home base, galing ba? Uh, and uh, combined with healthcare, with healthcare, tama? May, may klaro ko lang labat, yung technique, uh, yung trainees, yung trainees, that's the government to government, ano, right? Hindi siya talaga government to government. Ah, yung okay. government to government po natin is yung po yung JPEPA, EPA. Ito po yung nurses and caregivers under ah, okay. partnership okay. Uh, acceptance okay. program. Okay, thank you. Pero right. meron po yung ano, meron po yung uh, MOU, uh, MOU with mm -hmm. the government. Okay. Uh, so, director, I want to plug in pala kasi may bago ako ano eh. Baka mag okay. ma ano ko ma, ma makalimutan ko yung bagong emerging market ahead, namin. And this one, uh, maraming in, maraming na kaming information, maraming inquiries. Ito yung professional basketball players for oh. professional basketball. So marami oh. kami, uh, starting last month, marami kami inquiries from uh, prefectural basketball uh, teams and they were asking how to get professional basketball players sa Philippines. Actually, meron ng tatlo or dalawa na nandito na sa Japan and may, may nakuha din ako ng information na meron din tayong volleyball player na nandito na doon. No, very interesting. Alam mo, interesado din ako maging player dyan. <laughs> At hindi pala ako hindi pala ako na discover na ano. <laughs> as you can see din po dun sa professionals natin di ba second siya uh, ito yung tertiary industries natin but this tertiary industries next nag spread out po yung uh, landscape and i'm very happy for that uh, mm -hmm. yung quartinary quartinary sector natin ito yung mga professors professors researchers and mm -hmm. managers ng big companies, ito yung wow. mga think, think tank, uh, increasing din siya. And what is good with this is national universities po ang, ang nagre-request na kanila. When you say national universities, ito po yung top best universities 
in Japan. Hindi so, malalaki ang sweldo dyan. Malaki. Malalaki. <laughs> malalaki siguro ang sweldo dyan. Labat. No? Kung bihira. Depende po sa, sa posisyon. Depende sa prefectural. Mm -hmm. Pero basically, if they are in quartinary sector, mataas po talaga. Kasi ito yung sinasabi na think tank na talaga. They have this, they can do the decision making in the company, in the university, in research uh, organizations. May, may yung ating mga uh, home-based uh, service workers uh, labat para doon sa ibang bansa. Ano ang, ano ang salary o oh, anong sweldo? Anong level? Ikukumpara natin sa halimbawa sa Middle East. Ano po yung home base yung sinasabi natin? Yung household service workers? Yes, yes, laban. Um, uh, and other related... Uh, no. Yung household service workers natin sa Japan under National Strategic Special Zones, lima lang po yun na prefecture ang allowed na kumuha nito mga household service workers natin. Uh, isa niyan, Tokyo, Kanagawa, Chiba, Hyogo Ken, and I, I guess Aichi Ken. Pag hindi po nakasali sa five uh, National Strategic Special Zones, hindi po sila makakuha ng household service workers. I so, see. So, household service workers natin, minimum, naka-minimum standard uh, wage po sila. So, naka-range po sila ng 147,000 147, yen a month. Uh, paano ba ko compute yun? 147,000 yen? Basically, nasa mga 50,000 pesos yata yan. Oh, malaki na rin. Ano? Pero okay. hindi ko dyan pinapa-convert. Kasi sa Japan po nila yan ginagastos. Ah, Because when you say 147,000, kukunan pa po yan ng bahay, kukunan pa po yan ng mga uh, taxes. Mm -hmm. So para po malinaw. Okay. okay. Pwede pala akong mag-apply. Pwede pala akong mag-apply sa anak ko na ano. Pwede akong mag-apply sa anak ko na social service worker. Kaya na niya ako pa swelduhin kasi ang laki ng swelduhin. She's actually a trainee there, an a, a architectural trainee. Ah. Yeah. Uh, she hasn't passed the board here but because uh, she has yet to take the board and she needs training but she was brought to Japan during training period. Inaabot siya ng lockdown dito. Pwede na siya nakauwi. Hanggang ngayon, ayaw niya yata umuwi. Ayaw niya yata sa akin ng aking anak. <laughs> Anyway, kaya ka lang po, very mataas po yung quarantine. Mataas, yeah, mataas ang allowance nila. Yes, anyway, um, maganda, no? it's nice to know na uh, relatively maganda ang sitwasyon ng ating mga kababayan dyan compared to other, ano, dahil yeah, lesser uh, displacement. Ano ang prospect uh, labat ng labor market for our Filipino workers? Maganda po siya. So, i-share ko muna yung ating uh, bagong visa sa Japan. Actually, uh, April, 4, April 2019 ito na-approve. And nag-take off ito last year. So, can you please can you be please share the specified skilled worker visa? Ito po yung bagong visa ng Japan. Uh, ito yung, there was a uh, act of partial amendment to allow skilled workers sa Japan. So, kahit po hindi professionals, pag uh, may maganda naman na background sa 14 industries na to, you will be allowed to get this visa. So, ito mm -hmm. po yung pinatawag natin na specified skilled worker, ang uh, very popularly known as SSW visa. So, may dalawa po siya na category, SSW1 at saka SSW2. So ano po yung naka, pagkaiba sa, sa dalawang ito? Yung SSW1, may maximum of five years na uh, you are allowed to stay in Japan, but your family is not allowed to join you. But if uh, makukuha niyo po after five years, uh, ang SSW Visa 2, uh, this one is another five years stay in Japan, and may opportunity na for the family to join you here. So mas maganda siya. So ito ay meron tayong memorandum of cooperation between Philippines and Japan. And ang maganda nito kasi sa memorandum of cooperation, it was already stipulated that the amount of 
remuneration for the specified skilled workers should be equal to or more than the amount that Japanese national would receive. Bakit? Dahil po uh, ang visa na to ay it requires a considerable knowledge or experience in specified, specified industry fields. So ang basic qualification niya, 18 years old, pass the Japanese language proficiency test and skills test, parang JLTTN4 yata ang equivalent nito. At saka kailangan meron siyang, uh, yun nga, pasado din niya yung skills test related to that field. Or yung mga nakatapos ng TITT2 or yung three years na TITT program. So ano po itong 14 industries? Can you please uh, present the 14 industries? Yan. So these are the 14 industries under SSW. Yung number one natin are care worker. Uh, Japan needs uh, a lot of care workers. Then the second one, building cleaning management. Then we have the machine parts and cooling industries. As you can see, industry machinery. Ang raming pilian, may construction industry, electric, shipbuilding, automobile, aviation. Bago po ito, this aviation industry, accommodation, agriculture, Mm. Uh, farmers natin, fishery and aquaculture. Sa number 12 natin, nasa aquaculture po tayo kasi yung fishery natin, hindi pa po siya open dahil may uh, discussion about uh, if this is sea-based or land-based. Mm -hmm. Then, manufacturing of food and beverages. Kaya pag if the border will open, pagpunta ninyo sa Japan, sa hotel industry, nandiyan na po yung ating mga Filipino workers uh, smiling and uh, uh, will 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 assist you. Then food okay. service industry then. So yan po mm -hmm. yan sila lahat. That is the SSW visa. But for other visas, can we share for the top five? Uh, top five industry. Marami po siya. Let's start with the uh, uh, top five industry. Can we please share? Sige pa. Yung SSW po kasi, uh, Pag nakapasa po tayo ng JLTT M4 at saka skill test, okay na po siya. So, hindi na kailangan yung uh, educational attainment. Unless oh. lang po. Yes, unless lang po if you have other plans. Now, for top five industry under skilled labor. Itong skilled labor, kailangan nyo po ng 10 years experience. Related experience po yan. Hindi po ordinary experience. Kaya ang number one natin is equine. Ito po yung aking mga 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 ngabayo na nasa Hokkaido, Ibaraki, marami po yan sila dyan. Sila yung ating mga jockey, yung ating mga ha, horse groomer. The second one is food industry. Uh, itong food industry, ito yung mga cook. Yung usually nakikita ko nito, kinukuha from, from hotels na merong 10 years experience. So they come to Japan and uh, get this skilled labor visa. Then jewelry making, nandyan po yan sila sa Ueno, nasa uh, isang prefecture pa na mga mga jewelry designers natin grabe talaga kung makita niyo yung output nila ang maganda then sports mm -hmm. meron tayong uh, anong tinatawag coach mga tennis mga tennis coach then oh, okay. yes, number 5 oil and gas yun yung ating mga uh, skilled labor na sa drilling sa oil drilling industry. So this uh, skilled labor, ang basic salary nito, uh, nasa 220,000 to 250,000. Uh, inclusive po yan, uh, meron din yang bonus, allowances, at other benefits. Pero, ang salary na nato magdidepende po sa position, sa workers' qualification, and sa job site po yan. Mm -hmm. Okay, next, please. The next one is, uh, ito naman po ang ating mga professionals or highly skilled workers. Ito yung mga nasa tertiary industry or the quaternary industry. Number one, top one po natin as of June, 20, June 30, 2021 po ito. Similarly doon sa skilled workers natin. Meron tayong mga engineers and architecture. Uh, education, ito yung mga professors, mga assistant language teachers na nagtuturo sa elementary, elementary school, public school, and high school, and junior high school. 
then information technologies, linguistic services. Ito po yung ating mga mga interpreters. Uh, usually mm -hmm. they have JLTT and 2 and N3. Uh, in demand po sila ngayon sa Japan. Then mm -hmm. number five, ito po yung maritime. Pero land-based, ito po yung mga superintendents natin. Uh, na, natapos na sila sa sea-based at ngayon nag-land-based na po sila. As you can see, the basic salary range sa mga mga highly skilled professionals natin nagsa-start siya ng 220,000 yen to 900,000 yen. Meron niya mga bonus, oh, no. allowances, at saka mga benefits. Again, para para clear po tayo, ang salary na to varies depending on job position, worker's qualification, and job site. Mm, wow. Amen. Ah, Tapos next, meron tayong five industries eh. Oh. Sorry. Ba't kay pumasok si Secretary? <laughs> Ang 900,000 natin na uh, engineer nasa nasa international company po yan siya ngayon. Pero usually nasa range siya ng 400,000. Now, under technical intern training program, ito po yung top 5 natin. Though we have 53 53 job 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 sectors under this category. Ang number 1 po natin, construction. So may mga construction workers natin. Next is agriculture. This can be livestock or can be cultivation. Nasa Nagano po ito sila. Sa Tokyo, under Tokyo jurisdiction, nasa Nagano po, karamihan sa kanila. At saka sa Ibaraki, Ken. Others, na, nabilong po dito yung ating mga care, care workers na under TITP program. Merong building management, clean and, clean and supply, at saka ang mga automobile repair. Ito po yung nabisita ko last time sa Fukushima na nag-work sa mga automobile services company. Happy daw sila. I then, see. food manufacturing ang pinakaapat. Ito po yun ang mga baker natin na uuwi after the five or three years uh, three years training or five years training, they can have their own business in the Philippines because uh, may expose sila sa training in baking. Mm -hmm. Then, number five is machinery. Itong technical intern training program ng Japan, basically ang aim nito is for the for the Filipinos, kung in general Filipino young professionals or Filipino trainees to learn skills, knowledge from Japan. Then after their training period, they will go back to the Philippines and share the knowledge or start up new business or get a better job in the Philippines. Dahil ito ay technical intern training program, basic minimum salary ito, though ang, ang, ang OTIT or Organization of Technical Intern Training Act nag-stipulate din na uh, it's not just the minimum wage, but it should be the same as Japanese nationals with the same expertise. So ang range nito is 128,000 yen to 320,000 yen. Again, um, wow. Magbabari ito kung saan po yung uh, job category mo at most especially kung saan ang job site. Okay, next, let's have uh, another visa. Ano pa ba? Tama na ba? Apat lang ba sila dyan? May ano pa ba tayo? Uh, skilled worker, professionals. Then, ah, the SSW, the new program. Tingnan natin yung top 5 nila. Itong SSW natin, uh, ito yung pinaka sikat natin ngayon sa Japan. Kaya lang naabuta lang ng border restriction, kaya ang karamihan na uh, applicants nasa Philippines pa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when the border will open, uh, we expect uh, a number, quite a number of Specified skilled workers from the Philippines. All right. Oh, we're done with that. Uh, may top ten, may top five po yan. Ang number one din yan is construction. Construction. Construction under uh, SSW visa. Merong construction number one. Uh, number two. Uh, that's a technical intern trainee. Sa SSW naman, number one natin would be construction. Number two, technical intern training po yan. Uh, SSW po. 
Uh, number two niyan is nursing care. Number three, machine parts and tooling industry. Number four, automobile uh, repair and maintenance. And number five, agriculture. Sa Tokyo jurisdiction, ito po yung top five under specified skilled workers. And okay. the salary in this industry ranges from 180,000 yen to 322,000 yen. Dahil ito ay worker na. They are workers already. They are from, uh, usually they are from the TITP program who finish the, the training and they proceed to SSW kasi kaya mas mataas na po yung range ng salary nila. Okay. So again, uh, dito ang kagandahan sa specified skilled workers, meron na itong bonus dahil workers nga, meron na itong allowances at the same time, may mga other benefits na. Kagaya ng uh, usual na benefits na nakikita ko na sila submit nila would be uh, perfect attendance. Perfect attendance, hindi na nanigag, hindi na nanigag, hindi nagsusmoke, may additional ah. uh, benefits po yan. Mm -hmm. Oo. So, uh, similarly, naka-range din ito based on job site. So, ganun po kaganda ang market ng Japan. Okay. Uh, meron pa labat na category? O... Uh, yan lang po. Um, okay. Yes. Very impressive labat ah. Uh, and uh, very enlightening actually the way you do it. Uh, I, I would rather defer to, to our friends in media the further questions. But before I give them the, the chance to ask you, Labat, isa na lang, I understand, of course, we know that Japan is an aging population. Uh, diba? So do we see or how do, do we therefore see na mas lalaki pa yung demand? For, uh, for our, for us, for the Filipino labor to go there to fulfill or to undertake what is missing or what could be missing, uh, uh, looking forward, no, or for the economy of Japan. Yes, definitely. Uh, actually, yung sinasabi ko na SSW visa, ang kailangan po niyan is three hundred fifty thousand workers. Wow. So, three hundred fifty thousand workers naka bracket po yan every 14 every 14 categories pero so ano timetable noon labat yung 350,000 ano uh, timetable uh, for example po uh, yung SSW visa na ano na po siya yes for example itong care worker ang target nila is 60,000 care workers pag maabot okay. na po nila yung 60,000 magko-close na po yung program na yan so that would be between now and uh, say next year, ganun ba? Uh, itong 60,000 based sa record namin na yun, malayo pa kung masyado ang number. So ang target natin ito would be another for another two years. Kasi two years. Kasi meron kasi siyang qualification. So hindi uh -huh. siya basta-basta makuha pag hindi wala po kayong qualification. May okay. qualification po si Net and Japan. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Labat. I'm sure our friends in media would be very... Uh, excited to ask more about uh, some details in, in, this, in these programs. Unahin natin, uh, Labat, if you don't mind, si Gerard Naval ng Malaya. Magandang hapon, Gerard. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Hi, ma'am. Good afternoon. Hello, Mr. Naval. Opo. Ma'am, uh, papa-elaborate ko lang po yung sa SSW visa po. So, 350,000 po. Yan po yung total nung 14... Occupations, tama po ba ako? Yes. Opo. Tapos yung 60,000, yun po yung pinakamarami, yung care workers. May, may we know po yung mga kasunod pa po. Ang um, next niyan, sir, is the the second one is on construction po. 40, ano you know, sorry. Nasa food service industry po, 53,000. Yung category ng food industry. Ito po yung mga... Uh, food on food preparation, customer service, restaurant management. Kung ganun po yung yung uh, expertise niyo, then you can have this visa uh, job category. Then uh -huh. at, mm -hmm. I can I give you the top five, sir? Yes, please, ma'am. Number one, would let's have 
healthcare worker, we need 60,000 of that. This is all over the world, okay? Hindi lang para sa Pilipino ito, ha? The second yeah. one is food service industry, 53,000. Then the, four, the third one is construction industry. Marami po tayong ganito ngayon. Number four is uh, manufacture of food and beverages, 30, uh, sorry, sorry. Building management, uh, cleaning management, number four. Uh, this is 37,000. And number five is manufacture of food beverages, 34,000. Ma'am, sorry, yung construction, hindi ko nakuha yung number sa construction. 40,000. Opo, ma'am, sorry, uh, il ano ka rin po, kanong ko na rin po, yung sa professional basketball players. Mm. Opo, ano po yung may specific number po ba na hinahanap sila? And ano raw po yung reason bakit uh, merong increase in demand for Filipino bowlers? Um, ang number, uh, last time ang nalaman namin when there was an inquiry, tatlo po yung hiningi. Anang isang, isa lang siyang prefect, isang local government uh, for basketball player natin. Uh, dahil po nag-open, marami kasing, uh, ano tawag niyan, prefectural na basketball team na nagre-receive na ng mga international basketball players before. Pero ang Filipino, nag-start lang siya, I think, late last year until early this year tayo sa Philippines. Thank you po, ma'am. Uh, may question din po sana kay Sir Rolly. Okay, go ahead, uh, partner. Sir, sorry, yung tanong lang sa with regards dun sa imposition ng ECQ. Uh, okay. Will the DOLE encourage, uh, kasi sinabi na rin po ng MMDA na encourage yung mga companies na uh, work from home, uh, especially ngayon, sir, ECQ, sir? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I understand the secretary will issue uh, another advisory pursuant to the latest uh, decision of the IITF approved by the president. Of course, it's in view of the position of uh, stricter quarantines effective uh, August 7. So, hintay na lang po natin. Kasabay din po niyan yung uh, uh, pagdetermine ng how much will be Provide how much assistance will be provided to affected workers in the NCR, uh, which will be placed on ECQ uh, effective uh, August 7. Salamat, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Gerard. Uh, we are also joined the uh, Labat by Johnson Manabat of uh, ABS. Uh, Johnson, you may have some questions uh, for Labat. Uh, Rose, go ahead, please. Sir, good afternoon. Labat, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Sir Malata. Uh -huh. Ma'am, meron ba kayong figures dyan kung ilang Filipino na yung nakinabang dun sa bagong Japan visa at ilan yung actual job orders para sa mga Filipino workers? Sabi po ninyo, 350,000. Hindi lang po yun laan para sa Filipino. Ano po? Ano uh, po? For, for technical intern, uh, for SSW, Mag-start muna tayo sa job orders. Uh, this one, uh, kasi nagkanda kami ng uh, mid-year performance assessment, kaya nakuha namin itong number na po. So, under the polo jurisdiction, uh, meron tayong 329, even with the border restriction. We have 329 individual employment contracts verified. Ito yung nabilong sa, uh, nabilong under sa overseas performing artists natin. Then, itong meron tayong verified 894 na bago, job orders. 187 ito yung bagong job orders. Uh, may, 100, may 707 tayo na additional job orders. So, ito yung mga, mga usually nasa PITP program, SSW program, at saka sa professionals natin. Then, this year, uh, within the six-month time, meron tayong 758 na foreign-based principals and employers na bago nagpa-register nagpa under the jurisdiction of Polo Tokyo. So under naman sa SSW visa, I have that, I have that number actually. 
malaki ang increase ng number for a year. I have that number. Okay. For last March 2020, meron tayong 235 na SSW visa. But only a year, meron tayong 1,731 approved uh, SSW under this program. Kasi may border restriction pa, wala pang nakapasok. Yet, dahil meron tayong technical intern training program or trainees under the technical intern training program na nasa Japan, Uh, yung mga employers nila, they uh, employ them while they are here. Kaya nagkaroon tayo ng ganito na number, increased number. Thank you po. You're welcome. Thank you, Johnson. Uh, labat, uh, siguro we entertain a few more questions if you don't mind. Si Elson Kismorio ng Manila Bulletin is also with us. He may have some questions for you. Uh, Elson, magandang hapon. Hello, good afternoon po. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, hello. Uh, hello, Labat, and hello po, Director. I uh, was wondering po, Labat, if you had the chance to talk to Ms. Hidelin Diaz and if you could share po kung ano po yung napag-usapan, if, if nakapag-usap po kayo. Thank you. Yes, mm -hmm. I had that, that opportunity before she went home. Uh, but, but it was only virtually kasi very strict po yung Olympic uh, Committee sa Japan. And uh, she said, uh, actually, Tachi, masyado yung sinabi niya. And I shared it to the OFWs na kailangan lang po daw ang dream, kailangan hawakan. Yun lang po yung sinabi niya at grabe talaga ang effect niya sa amin. She's really Lab. happy during that time, sir. Ang sabi po, ang, ang, ang dream po ay dapat pong ano? Hawakan, uh, hawakan mo yung... Ang hawakan. Uh, Thank you po. Thank you po. You're welcome. Thank you, Elson. Labat, uh, siguro isa nila kung okay lang sa'yo. Si Gab. Si Gab uh, Villegas ng Daily Tribune. Magandang hapon, Gab. Gab? Okay. All right. While waiting for Gab, we'll have Bianca Nyago ng Business World. Uh, magandang hapon, Bianca. Uh, good afternoon po, sir and uh, Ma'am Labat. Hello, Ma'am Labat. Um, ko lang po, sir. Uh, may list na po ba ng sectors na uh, who can make their employees report to work physically po? No, sa under ECQ and ngayon pong heightened restrictions ng GCQ. Kung may list na ng inspectors? Uh, nung sectors po na who can make their employees report to work <laughs> physically po. Sorry. Um, Nanyat, uh, the, the senior officials of the department will meet very soon uh, because of these two uh, protocols that is being imposed. So, hintay lang uh, early next week we'll have We will announce the uh, before the effectivity of uh, the ECQ. Okay, po, sir. Thank you, po. Okay. Si Ted Cordero, labat ng GMA News. Uh, Ted, good afternoon. Oh, no, wala siya. All right. Si Tess Esquadro ng Saksi. Yes, uh, you have some questions for Labat? Kasi napaka napaka daming information mo na share no Labat at parang overwhelmed lahat. Pati nga ako hindi ko na alam kung ano yung tatanong no. <laughs> parang bigla akong oops, ganoon pala karami yung ano. Anyway, siguro yun yung nasa isip ng ating mga kaibigan sa media kaya Wala, wala na silang matanong because you already bombarded us with so much information that is really enlightening and uh, uh, very informative really. Dahil wala nang gusto magtanong labat, I, I wish to thank you for joining us uh, today. 
Uh, it's really a wonderful presentation you have. Ano yung ibang mga labat ganyan din ka husay? <laughs> I mean, parang hindi ka prepared labat no, sa ano mo. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, baka meron ka na lang, uh, you may have some message for our um, kababayan at yung mga nandyan na uh, ano, yung looking forward to uh, uh, getting your assistance or their families here back home. Go ahead, please, uh, Labat Rose. Sir, sir can, can I have two? Oh, ah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. So, no number problem. one po, I would like to share yung aming uh, reintegration program this coming Sunday. Can you please share the the infographics? I would I would like to invite everyone, yung lahat ng OFWs na Ayo, yeah, Bye. yes. So, please join uh, us on Sunday. Sorry, ah, nakalimutan ko. <laughs> May infographics po kami. Uh, pwede po natin i-share para makita. Yeah, the housing, yes. yes. This is a very important event, Labat. It's in preparation. Uh, it's in uh, uh, yeah, partnership yeah, yeah. with the National Housing Authority. Uh, ano po ito? August 1st, 2021, ngayong Sunday. Sa Japan is 3 to 5 p.m. Sa Manila time, this is 2 to 4 p.m. This will be graced by our secretary, our beloved secretary, Sylvester Bell, you'll be third. And the general manager of the National Housing Authority, si GM Marcelino P. Escalada Jr. And our ambassador, Jose C. Laurel V. Fifth, will be also joining us, as well as Admin Hans Leo, Jay Kakda, uh, will also join us. Please uh, join us on Sunday, guys. Okay. Second, meron po akong pre prepare na speech para hindi po, hindi ko po makalimutan. <laughs> Sige, uh, kung kayo po ay may balak na magtrabaho sa Japan, please check po ninyo ang mga approved job orders for Japan na nakikita sa POEA website at poea.gov.ph. Ingat po tayo sa illegal recruiters, brokers, mga in unscrupulous intermediaries na nasa Pilipinas at nandito sa Japan. Wala pong placement fee or recruitment fees for overseas work sa Japan. Okay? And wala din pong verification fees ang mga foreign workers na binabayaran sa Polo, Tokyo. Kabayan, kung ang plano ay magtrabaho, kailangan wastong proseso para maayos na trabaho ang makukuha sa Japan. Naghihintay po kami sa inyo. And please join us this Sunday, again, sa tahanan ng Bagong Bayani, an OFW Housing Seminar in partnership with the National Housing Authority. And... Follow us on our website at polotokyo.dole.gov.ph at official Facebook page at polo-owa for more information and updates. Then to end, from the Polo Tokyo team, wastong proseso, maayos na trabaho. Polo Tokyo, gabay at kalinga ng OFW. Magandang hapon po sa inyong wow. inyong. Wow. <laughs> Very nice. Pwede ko bang i-adapt yon slogan na yan? Hindi <laughs> uh, talaga prepared sila, but... <laughs> uh, meron lang akong request bago kita pakawalan, but... Uh, can, can we have a, cop a copy of those, Juan, uh, your, your graphs kanina, so that we can cascade more? Kasi inisip ko kailangan mas madami pa tayong ma... ma Mada digest from the information you shared with us this afternoon. So, uh, please, ma'am, ano po? Yan. Thank you very much. Again, ma'am, maraming maraming. Teka lang. Ma'am, nag-aaral ka na ba ng, ano, ng Nihongo? Are you already fluent in Nihongo? Uh, meron akong reserve na lima. Arigato gusaymas. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. That's good enough. Yes. Ma'am, again, thank you, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, uh, Labor Attaché uh, Mary Rose Escalada, ang pinuno po ng ating Philippine Overseas Labor Office dyan sa Japan, sa Tokyo, Japan. Uh, again, ingat po kayo dyan, uh, Ma'am Mary Rose, Labat Rose, at yung po inyong mga kasama. Mag-ingat po tayo. Thank you very much again. Mga kaibigan, mga kababayan, maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, we hope we, we were able to share with you through, of course, our uh, labor attaché, Rose, uh, doon po sa Tokyo. Uh, napakaraming hitik na hitik na informasyon ng English. Uh, 
oportunidad, oportunidad para sa hanap buhay, sa trabaho at iba pang ibang iba't ibang klase ng trabaho at that, no? Sa Tokyo at iba pang bahagi ng Japan. Kaya uh, ibabahagi po namin muli uh, yung mga ibinahagi ni ni Labat Rose para mas pakinabangan pa natin at mas marami pang mga kababayan natin ang uh, maka, makaalam kung ano ang mga kailangan at anong mga bakante, anong mga trabaho ang ang in demand ngayon diyan sa bansang Japan. Kaya mga kababayan, anais po namin kayong magpasalamatan sa pagsama niyo sa amin ngayong hapon. Thank you also to our friends in media who joined us this afternoon at doon po sa ating mga kasamahan sa Department of Labor sa iba't ibang post sa buong mundo in all 40 posts uh, all over the world at yung po mga kasama natin sa Department of Labor, mga kamang, uh, ka, ka, kababayan natin mga gagawa sa iba't ibang sulok ng uh, Pilipinas. Si Secretary Bello po na andyan sa Mountain Province uh, hanggang bukas Mayroon pong payout ng, uh, ng tupad at iba't iba pang uh, uh, programa ng DOLE na para pakinabangan ng ating mga kababayan dyan sa Mountain Province, sa iba't ibang uh, bayan ng Mountain Province hanggang bukas ng uh, hapon. Kaya nag-ingat po kayo dyan, Sec. Bebot. Kasama po niya ating mga senior officials na pinamumuno. Ah! Halos lahat po ng undersecretaries pala. Full mobilization dyan sa Mountain Province. Siyempre yung ating cluster head, si Yusek uh, Benjo. Ah, Yusek Benjo ah, binati kita for the first time. <laughs> Siyempre yung, yung head po ng uh, cluster for uh, regional operations, si Yusek Anadione, kasama din po dyan. At yung cluster head po ng admin and uh, and ad, uh, uh, employment, si Yusek uh, Renato Boy Ebarle, kasama din po dyan. So, mag-ingat po kayo dyan. So, of course, yung reyna ng tupad, si Director Karen Trevilla, yan, kasama din dyan. Ewan ko lang kasama yung ating uh, Queen of Employment, si As Assistant Secretary Nikki Tutay, kung kasama rin dyan. Pero don't worry, I'll be joining you in a bit. Uh, we'll join you there in Mountain Province. See you. I'll be there in spirit. Okay. So muli po, maraming maraming salamat sa ating mga kababayan, sa ating mga kababayan. We'll see you again uh, next week. Pero bago ko po kayo uh, iwanan, muli ang paalala. Dahil sa uh, end of next week, meron na pong bagong quarantine protocol. Mas mahigpit po. Balik po tayong ECQ. Ang ibig kong sabihin dyan, higit na pag-iingat at kung may bakuna, again, Lagi binibili ni Secretary Bebot, magpabakuna na po tayo. Madami ng bakunang available. Grab the opportunity to have yourselves vaccinated. Mag-ingat po tayo lahat. Sa ngala po ng Department of Labor and Employment at ni Secretary Bebot Bello, maraming maraming salamat po. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat.